Hey, welcome to this Masterclass Roundtable. We're talking about multi-site, and uh, we've got some great leaders around the table uh, who've all got different expressions of that. I'm going to go straight to Sam uh, yep. Pickin from C3 Toronto. Yeah. Uh, you've, got, you've got two campuses right now. Yeah, two locations. And you're about to launch a third location. Third in September. So what was, what's your, like, how do you decide on the expansion? What made you plant that yeah. first extension and now kind of go on to a third? Right, good question. So, uh, I think there's there's a number of reasons. A common one would probably be the room's too full, we've got to expand. But for us, in our context uh, and what we've experienced, that wasn't it. So for us was to keep disrupting so that we keep, that we don't get stagnant. And um, someone said uh, once that uh, sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to just create a bigger one. Yeah. And that's essentially what vision is, is to keep creating bigger problems. Yeah, well. We're all in agreement right there. Yeah, <laughs> so, so for, for us, uh, the one location, it was starting to feel a little bit like too comfortable or too routine. So it was good to just disrupt that and then do it again. And, and like, how, how does that, how does your like locations look at the moment? Are you fully overseeing them? like? Do you have camp? Do you have location pastors yeah. in each one? Or no? When we started it, we didn't have campus pastors, um, because I wasn't ready. It's easier to give a title than take it away, so I wasn't ready to do that. Um, but then we put two campus pastors over each one, and I just do the senior pastor thing over that. And then hopefully now doing the third one, I'm looking at someone now. Oh, I like the fact that you said disrupt. You know, yeah. I think for us, I would love our story with plenty of campuses just because we kept outgrowing the spaces and we just needed to plant locations mm -hmm. just to fit everyone in. That's never been our story. Ours has always been, hey, here's the vision. Yeah. Uh, when we started, we had a really great faith story of moving country and we saw how much that ignited faith in people. Wow. But I didn't want that to be the only story I tell of faith for the next 10 years. Yeah, wow. What if we keep stretching in faith? And I think for us, planting new locations and doing that over and over again has created that yeah. faith opportunity really that story to be able to tell people and ignite faith and so, it's yeah. created Great. we've definitely built opposition for ourselves uh but i think throughout history pastor phil always says how, this how many locations do you have now we've got five we've got five locations um and uh we're about Crazy. to go to 10 locations but you know pastor what? phil always said you know, the church grows in a climate of war. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And so you can either wait for opposition or you can create opposition. And I'd rather create the opposition because you can manage that better, mm. that tension, uh, rather than wait for media opposition or wait for some, you know, government decision that opposes you and then see growth. Or you just create the tension uh, yeah. by right. by planting campuses. And you've got a lot of tension to work with then. Yeah, you're, wow. you're, now, you're, pla you're actually planting, like, distance, aren't you? We you're, are you're now, planting, yes. Planting, you're planting into... We are now, yeah. All, all so, I mean, it's it's always been vision. It's been a connection of, for us, the location choice has been, you know, a lot Holy Spirit. Uh, and and I do like the places where we're planting churches. Someone said to me recently, you just want to plant churches where you like going. <laughs> I said, opposed well? to, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. you know, uh, yeah, I have to be there as well. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's it's really kind of fitting demographics that we really feel need a C3 uh, style yeah. church. Yeah. Wow. Um, and where I think that that's where it's going to vibe and flourish and people need Jesus. And so creating uh, opportunities. And I mean, the church grows quickest with church plants, in my mm. opinion, with new campuses. Right. There's an acceleration of energy mm. and uh, people come to Christ. And yeah. so uh, that's why we're committed to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Becky, jump in and tell us about yeah. San Diego, what, what you San guys Diego, doing. Yeah, we currently have four operating campuses in San Diego, uh, fitting out our fifth. And then we have a Salt Lake City campus yep. that we took on. Um, and so I, I actually love hearing your guys' perspective on that. And uh, our vision, it, the original vision was one church, four locations when Pastor Yugen Leanne came to San Diego, but we quickly met that church. vision. Yeah. And so now it's one church in 16 locations. Yeah. So we are going to wow. win the wow. city of San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, That's and an aggressive so, vision. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And so... Um, and the focus is San Diego. San Diego. I think that's a great start. I don't think that's where it's going to end, which is really exciting. So I love your guys' take on that. because and we, and we do know we are always looking for more campuses uh, in San Diego. Mm. But right now, like at our central campus where my husband and I pastor, we are 
needing to find a second central campus because we are busting, we're over yeah, capacity. Right. So I think it's like about when you're about 80% full, they say you need to be looking because people are yeah. coming in now, there's certain services. We have four services on the Sunday at yeah. our central campus and we still on occasionally have the overflows yeah, and a wow. few of those. So, so we are Crazy. currently trying to find a second campus for John and I to oversee. So okay. we'll eventually have four ourselves that we oversee and then our North campus will have four that they oversee, our right. East four and South wow. four. So that's kind of how we're. How, wow. how, so, how are you maintaining culture? Let's talk about culture in in the sort of campus model. Because yeah. obviously you are, uh, well, you've got a very strong kind yeah. of leadership mm -hmm. with Jurgen yeah. and yes. Leanne. And uh, so, how do you? Is you know, what what kind of things have you put into place to maintain that sort of sense of C right. three San Diego in your yeah. as you kind of plan? And that's the one thing I actually love when people come and visit and preach in our church. They'll go to our North Campus in the morning, and then you were you yeah. were just there, and, and then our it's Central amazing. Campus, and, not, and they're oh like, my gosh. this is crazy how the culture is so similar. I mean, there's mm. little differences here and there because right. there's different leaders, and we all have our personalities, but mo for the most part, uh, the culture is very strong and yeah, similar across all campuses. So I think when you- It was, and it was insanely robust, as in- Great, I love that. As, as in, you could easily, like lead your own church. And that just is a testament to the overarching vision of Pastor mm -hmm. Jürgen and Leanne. Yeah. Like it's amazing. We want the feel to be the same across all campuses. So I guess it kind of depends on your planting philosophy. Right. Like, are you sending someone out and you're gonna have very little? Or our philosophy is one church in 16 locations. So even though we'll have 16 campuses, we still look at ourselves as one church. And so we feel if you go to North, South, East, or Central, you're gonna walk in and while the people's faces are different and a little bit of tweaks of, you know, uh, styles with leadership, you're going to get the same feel, the same power, the yeah. same worship, wow. the same welcoming atmosphere, mm -hmm. all of that. And so for us having a similar vision, well, I think you have to have, everyone has to get on board with the vision. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know how, how we would do it. You know, that, what is it? Genesis 11, the tower of Babel or, right. Babel or whatever you want to call it. Sure. You know, they had yeah. the, all one language, one speech, yeah. and the Lord said that there, there was, nothing was going to be impossible for them because everybody was on the same page. Yeah. But yeah, then, right. you know, the Lord came and disrupted it, and then what yeah. happened? The building stopped, they all scattered. And sure. so for us, everyone being on the same page, understanding what the vision is, the culture is, what church is supposed to be like, is everything to us. You know what's fascinating for us is we, we have a similar culture, but we're in completely different regions on the world. We've, mm. been, we've got an Italian version yeah. of Vive Church and a Bay Area yeah. version of Vive Church. So we have uh, definitely focused on the core values, yeah. you know, of the presence of God, uh, those elements of life and, and community. Those core values, when we focus on that, you can be in an Italian expression of our church. Yes. And there are so many differences, you know, just because of culture, mm -hmm. political views, all that kind of stuff, but yet you're still in the same church. And I right. think that uh, the expression of culture is at the heart of the values in the mm -hmm. church. So I think if you keep your values right and focused with every campus, right. uh, the culture is going to tend to play its own way a right. little bit because of just the feel. And you want it to feel different. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to bring an American mentality to Italian church. I love that Italian church. Right. You know, they kiss you on both cheeks when you arrive there. You're not getting that in the Bay Area. Yeah. And if you are, <laughs> you, you want to be careful of that person. Flag security. But, uh, but you still want that, that presence of God atmosphere yeah. that yeah. you feel the same. And I think that's what makes it feel like home. Yeah. When you walk in, and it could even be a different song. But the presence of God is here. Yeah. It feels like home. I would. I often describe it like different C three churches. Uh, it's like being in a different room in the same house. Right. Mm. And so Beautiful. each room has its different culture, its different yeah. flavor, its different sense. Even sometimes it's different purpose or context. Right. But it's got a different expression. Mm -hmm. But it all comes part of the the yeah. same home. And so as you travel around the world in in C three culture, you can feel at home. But you're in a different right. room in that home and because yeah. our story with our locations is quite similar i mean we have a um an indigenous church in the middle of the desert mm -hmm. uh in the oh, west australian pilbara go. region they literally run church um on a piece of carpet under a um, you know, a, wow. a pergola built that. in wow. the middle of the desert. So uh, wow. And that's one of our locations. And then we have a location in Bali in Indonesia. And okay. then we're about to um, launch number five uh, in North Perth in wow. the city of Perth. Amazing. So Incredible. we often like lay them on the table and go, this is an eclectic smorgasbord. Yeah. Of, like yeah. this is 
cheese, so tomato, good. ham, gherkin sandwich. Like it's, it's there's just <laughs> so many amazing. layers. And so for us, it's quite a different story as opposed to having this distinct flavour right. across them yeah. all. It's actually like very different rooms of wow. the same house. I think our yeah. story is uh, quite exciting too uh, because we have four locations uh, for C3 Alive. Yeah, yeah. But before that, we had planted two church plants. Uh, so what you see, if you go to these different locations, the culture is a little different. In the city and in the country towns, it's quite different. Yeah. The two locations, the two churches we planted in the country towns, different have a different vibe, different feeling, different way of doing things. Like in our countries, most of Africa, you'll find different languages. As in people have like mm. 20, 10 dialects. Sure. Wow. wow. Yeah, so it can be different. That's America too. It, wow. <laughs> so, good. <laughs> so good. So it's like the city ones are English, pro-English. Yeah. But the country ones have a mixture. It's English and translation. So when we went multi-site, we were like, we want to have something with one culture mm. because we want to celebrate one thing. So we had to go for this is English and we are going to do it, of course, the African way. We are not trying <laughs> yeah. to do mm -hmm. an English church in Africa. It's just the language, but the expression is still African. So in the four locations, it's pretty the same thing. But then the church plants, we like said, OK, fine, be yourself, do, do your thing the way you want to do it. But if you go to the locations, it's like same style. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so is there like a nego like, would you say there's a negotiable and a non-negotiable when you're launching a campus out of you know your your current church like is there some things you would say like we all at least need to carry these right. qualities and then these things you know different style of music or or whatever it may yeah, be like what c3 things uh would make sure that they're doing i think for us it's not even that tough tough things okay. it's the small things you just walk into the auditorium or you meet the people and you're like, these guys are the same. Mm. So we basically want that. If you walk to one of our locations, like the dress code, right. those are just small things. Right. right. The format of preaching is mm -hmm. the same. The, mm. the format of singing is the same. Like for us, the songs will have like a list of songs we are doing in a season, mm -hmm. if it's like 10 songs. Then uh, the different music directors at different locations can choose and play around yeah. the same thing. That's exactly yeah. what we do. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, it is was... amazing actually how, um, like, if you have a DNA and a culture, how it translates. Because obviously, with for us, we've got a number of locations in the UK, but we've gone into Germany, we've gone into Ghana, we've gone into Malaysia, wow. and uh, but like, if yeah, if you walk into any of those mm -hmm. uh, locations, they feel like Hope City Church, mm. and and yeah. it's yeah. and we're singing the same songs, but everyone does put their little. You know, there's, yeah. a, there's a bit of a cultural yeah. it's a tension, twist right? on it. Because yeah. you, you want to you identify the cultural elements that you like, hey, this is beautiful, yeah. this is why God called us here. At the same time, when we went to the United States with our first location, people always ask us, how did you adapt to the culture? And I never adapted because mm. God brought a, wanted us to bring a different culture. So it's the tension between mm -hmm. identifying the culture yeah. elements you want to keep and yeah. the kingdom culture that you want to bring. Yeah. Yeah. And it's balancing those two cultures and yeah. knowing yeah. what I'm going to bring. Yeah, I, think yeah. a big, I think a real key for us has been, uh, has been our senior pastors, Dave and Jenny. Right. You know, so, so they know what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually probably brings under a good question just talking about uh, the sort of management of the details because right. like Dave's, Dave's in the details. Sure. Wow. You know, so, sure. so for, for as a lead pastor, that's uh, wonderful and yep. frustrating. And so frustrating. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, it's like, okay, but at the same time sure. when Dave reinvents something, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you, you get into a slipstream. It's like, gosh, this is going somewhere because he's the apostle. He's the yeah. guy who's the leading leader. this thing. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it does, you know, just bring incredible freedom. You're not carrying everything and yeah. coming up with every creative idea. I like that. But at the same time, Dave also has an, a brilliant way of getting us together as a team and saying, hey, look, let's, Let's talk this through. Um, we have a rule, you know, never agree to disagree. So it's like, so we always come to a place of agreement mm -hmm. on anything wow. that's happening. Wow. Um, yeah. But how does that, like, like for you, with yes. Rock, with, you know, with you setting up these locations, are you a detail micromanage kind of, I don't like the word micromanage, actually, because it sounds mm -hmm. really negative. But, you know, like, mm -hmm. do you like to get into absolute details with your locations or are you very much just sort of, you know, like the guys? I go? think I will give it a percentage. Mm. I think details to me is like 40%. Okay. And then 60% is be yourself, but within the culture. So what's in the 40%? Uh, 
Uh, the 40% is basically the data, the stats. We want to know that. Uh, the doctrine, what is being preached. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the music. Yeah. I want to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. And, and the, of course, what happens to the finances is something that we do centrally. So for us, for me, the security that I have with my locations is I never launch out someone who is not in the culture and mm -hmm. who hasn't done life with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So yeah. by the time we are launching out, we are saying you're a location person. So you've got a proven product with that person. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah. 100%. We never risk it. Right. We, we never try it out. We send our best and we know it's going to work. Yeah. Now, even if I'm not asking for a report, they will bring it anyway. Mm. And for us, we don't have like technology in my part of the world. So it's not a lot of Skype. It's about we are hanging out every two weeks right. in this spot and right. we all come together as location pastors and discuss stuff. Mm -hmm. So we actually do that fortnightly, mm -hmm. which is cool. One time is to discuss ministry stuff. And then the other thing is just do life together. I'd probably be the opposite to you. Wow. I would micromanage way more. Okay. So what's the percentage? <laughs> 99% oh, wow. <laughs> We just take a moment to pray for Adam's <laughs> team. But the reason okay. being, I haven't Tell had the luxury us. of time. Okay. Yeah. okay. We've planted, we're, it comes yeah. September, we've done 10 locations in six years. So I haven't had the longevity of walking with these people for 10 years. Mm. So it's, it's, it's empowering them with an opportunity, but walking them with training wheels. Do you think your 99 will become... Oh, over time, over time, for sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, but, you know, I, I've got... I got people leading campuses who have been saved for a year, uh, but maturity in Christ is not how long you've been a Christian. It's how how much you're applying what you know, application yeah. Yeah. more than more than duration. And so for us, these guys are so fired up and they're passionate and they're walking with Jesus. All right, let's give an opportunity, but let's walk it with training wheels. Let's right. paint by numbers mm -hmm. for, for a season. And then those numbers become less and less. Yeah. Those gaps become bigger and uh, it becomes more of an over- uh, overseer kind of role as they prove themselves. Have you Rather ever had any of them push back in terms of like, hey, listen, I'm Italian, I've lived here, I'm in Rome. Like, <laughs> I think that's you, the but... tension of ambitious leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think if I was afraid of ambitious leaders, I would, I wouldn't get that. But I like ambitious leaders. I like. So you like I, it when they push back? Yeah, I'd rather a horse, a horse you have to rein back than a horse you have to whip. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree with that. You know, if you yeah. can use their own energy to mm -hmm. achieve and to build, then you just guide them. Yeah. That, right. for me, is a, an easier way to lead than always cracking the whip, telling them they're good, you can do this. You know, So you them launch the them out and then you give them the entire plan. You're 99% micromanaging. Just give them the plan. And then I know you it have... might be a little dramatic, but it's... But I like the drama. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <So, laughs> yeah, but... like, like reigning in a horse, the way you describe it, doesn't sound like micromanaging. That sounds, that sounds like... Well, you want passionate yeah, people that are, yes. like, ready to yeah. just take on the city. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. take zeal. Yeah. I'll take passion. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take, but without the culture, the micromanaging is how we do things. Correct. You, so, I mean, and how we can micromanage because we are broadcast. So mm -hmm. a lot of what we do right. as far as the messaging that comes from, from the central location. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, it's we have got systems. Mm -hmm. We've got structure. Yep. We've got mm -hmm. all those things that you yeah. can literally jump into a role and succeed uh, without making too much damage. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the, the more experience you get, mm -hmm. the more contribution you have into how we do things as a global church. I love, I love that you said releasing, right? Because like, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm the receiver and the giver. Right. So being a, being a second chair leader as well as a lead pastor in yeah. a mm -hmm. city, because we're not just in the same city, so there is distance, is that I'm the, kind of the receiver of the, de, of the to, to some degree, management Micromanaging, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But then, yep. and then, and then that becomes my culture. Can I ask you, you a know? hard question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, high inflection. We'll see whether we cut this or not. Have you have you disagreed with something that Pastor Dave has wanted to do? Yeah. And, and thought this is not going to work because you're the man on the ground. Mm -hmm.